What's going on guys? We're back, another video, hockey season's only a couple weeks away, three weeks away I think until the NHL camps open, so I'm definitely getting excited for that. I also got the contest coming up, so I'm going to do that. I set it in stone. I'm going to do the draw on September the 17th, and the way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to do it on Instagram Live, okay? So I'll figure out exactly how I do that. I'll do it sort of like a break. Those of you who are familiar, I'm just going to randomize it and, and do a draw, get everyone's name in there, and we'll do that, and I'll also show the cards. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram, Lapper Flips, L A P P 3 R 3 0 underscore flips. Follow me on Instagram. But that's the contest. We're getting ready for the hockey season, and I use a lot of spreadsheets. And I know this isn't the most exciting of stuff, but I'm gonna show you some of the sheets that I use because I, I think there's I think if you're not using sh some sheets in this way or doing something similar. Um, I, I think that might be a mistake, especially when we're talking about grading plays, but there's other things too. So we're going to have a look at those. This is how I do it, but you know, you should definitely find your own way. It's just really important to figure these things out and to be able to keep track of the cards coming in, cards going out, you know, dollars coming in, dollars going out, all those sort of things. So well, let's take a look at some spreadsheets. Okay guys, let's take a look at some spreadsheets. So these ones I don't really use much anymore, but I, I think that they're a really good idea and I should get back to using them. Um, this was the very first, one of the very first spreadsheets that I made. So this shows all of my purchases. So you can see the cards that I bought. I bought the player, or sorry, I put down the player, the card type, put where I bought it, the sellers. I've just closed that down so you can't see who I bought off of. Um, if it's graded and it's raw and then I obviously got the price and at that time I was keeping track of PSA 10s because I was always looking for the opportunity you know for that grading arbitrage where there were cards that were selling at you know ten dollars and you know a PSA 10 was selling for a hundred and forty dollars those made for good opportunities so so that's why I was tracking that but regardless this was just a good way of keeping track of the cards that are coming in I was buying so many cards on eBay and Facebook and all these places that I didn't really i wasn't going to remember where they're coming from hell i mean i probably missed you know some cards um coming in that i i never got i did catch a few of them for sure but but something like this is a really good idea now just for fun let's take a look at what i got here what i bought so my, the first cards that i bought were some victor arvidsons on ebay um miro heiskanen uh this is the first one that shows in my ebay account was this miro heiskanen young gun so uh, I'm not sure about those maybe oh they were all in the 12th so it was just the order that I put them in anyways bought a couple of Kale Makar young guns you know bought some good stuff and the interesting thing is when you look at the prices they're not that great like this this to bring it young gun obviously 1350 is a very good price fetch was up at six. I got one for 66 it looks like one for 50 but I mean the the reason that I point that out is it's it's okay to wait like I always say you don't have to get these guys at two dollars and you know there's guys that were waiting on tim stutzla is a perfect example i did buy a single i have one tim stutzla uh coming in so i i have a little piece of him but i don't actually mind waiting until next year and seeing what this year brings sort of the same situation where we're at with josh norris you know there's nothing wrong with waiting two or three years on these guys so don't feel like you have to rush out and make these investments and that if you don't make it today it's never going to happen that that's not the case because look at these prices they're, they're not that great um i mean certainly you can go back look at this i paid 15 dollars for a dennis Kurianov. um I do have some good stuff in here. Look at this. I got onto Anthony Sorelli. This was in the playoffs. And yeah, I just jumped all over and paid $8.50 a piece. I told my buddy, uh, Brent, you you may be out there. <clears throat> you know, $8.50, great buy for Anthony Sorelli. Jesus. Well, you know, you, you win some, you lose some. So, anyways, but the, the point being is this spreadsheet is is a really good idea to uh, to have something like this. Here Here's a good one that I did. I'll point this one out. Because this was uh, Braden Point Young Guns. I bought a lot of three of them, BGS 9.5s. None of them were true gems. When I was selling these, I thought that I was into the card for $130 per card. I actually purchased these three cards, these three Braden Point Young Gun BGS 9.5s 
for a total of $130. So I did really well on those cards, but anyways, that, that's the first spreadsheet that I use. You know, keep track of your cards. Make sure that you're getting what you're supposed to. Make sure that those, you know, eBay, you can go through that. But if you're buying lots on Facebook and stuff, it's important to know what you have coming in, especially if you're buying a high volume of cards. And, and I was clearly, I mean, you can look at the dates on these, like, this is, you know, 10 days later, I have all these cards coming in. Anyways, um, you know, really good idea to do that. This was the one, this is the reason that I have market movers right now. So this is the time that I was putting in and updating all of these raw card prices um, to see what the multiple was to a PSA 10 to look for those grading opportunities that I was talking about. So I had my M to raw for all these guys. So, you know, OV, the higher end cards were a bit lower you can take a look at these raw prices these these have changed significantly um i shouldn't say significantly but they've changed connor's up over a thousand bucks he's almost not double that but he's up a good chunk uh crosby is up more than that Ovi's pretty close to that maybe he's he's over 850 but anyways this sheet was for me to really track the m to raw and this is what i was trying to do so if we scroll down you can see my green spots. So we got Thomas Shabbat here was at $13. Um, and a PSA 10 was going for around $100. So that's a 7.69 multiple. So that's a card that, you know, is sort of intriguing to me. Same thing, Travis Connecting here, $12 card, $100. Look at this, Morgan Frost was going for $100. Now you have to keep in mind, you're, you're not going to get these cards back. We didn't know at the time, but I figured it would be a few months. Um, but you know, these plays right now, obviously you can't make because PSA is closed and I am doing another video. I'm, I'm working so hard at the research of, of looking at other grading companies with MNT and SGC specifically. Um, I do have a spreadsheet on that. So I'll talk a little bit more about that. These are the kind of opportunities that you want to look for regardless of, of where you want to go though. So Robert, Tom Robert Thomas was $11 and, uh, you know, $100 for a PSA 10. Dylan Larkin was going for $30 and $170 PSA 10. So an M of about 5.6. You know, Zach Wierenski. You have all these guys that it's just important that you really take the time and know this data and look for the opportunities because not every opportunity, not every card is a good one you know yes you pull your rv here you know just one that i'm just grabbing so 15 dollars, and then it goes for 50 as a psa 10. okay so so not a great grading card but this is the whole reason i went to market movers because now it does all this stuff for me it keeps track it saves me time i pay whatever it is uh x dollars per month but the amount of time that it saves me from having to go through this whole list and update it is well worth the money next we'll go into my com c shipments so this is all the cards that i have listed on com c and you can see down here i got com c1 com c2 com c3 so i currently have three of those this is my oldest one the first one that i got back the yellow stuff is all uh pc stuff so it's stuff that I actually pulled i'm not accounting for the cost of that because it's cards that i'm holding and not currently selling uh, but the red and the red is stuff that's sold and the white is stuff that I still have in inventory and you can see for this one here I received this on February the 20th I was uh, this was a total cost to me which includes shipping of $419.96 I spent on this return from com C and I have a total currently of $935.93 in sales and an ROI of 123% you can see right here it took me two months and I almost recouped all of the money that I'd spent on the Com C. And two months later, at the four month mark, I was right where I am right now. So uh, unless I missed marking some cards, I'm still sitting at the, the same spot. I do every card that goes out uh, that comes from Com C, I do track. So I guess I just haven't made a sale of one of these cards. I'm, I'm not sure what it is, but that's my Com C. And you can take a look. This is the, you know, the same thing. It looks slightly different, but um, a newer shipment. I didn't mark the date that I got this. I should have that in here. 
Anyways, it's a newer shipment, so I've told sold a total of $176.54, and this the dollar invested was $520.86. And all this information, I didn't type this out. All that I did was on every Com C page on my shipment. I just copied and pasted that over. So I, I didn't take all this information and put it in here. You know, do it the easy way. I put in these things, um, just my shipping cost per card. So this was a dollar five, pretty expensive shipping cost per card. This is all in Canadian. And then my, my total amount invested and then my sold total and then my ROI. So I'm currently down 33% uh, to get back to break even, but no big deal there. This is a shipment I just got in. So it looks a little bit different. I like it cause it's got the, the picture of the cards there and i just got this shipment i still have a box here that i'm i'm listing i have this to be listed in there that's all penny sleeves um that's got to go in there so i don't even have it all in there but i've i've sold already 99 dollars and 10 cents shipping a little bit cheaper on this one 75 cents but again i just went in copied and pasted all this got that information in there and then when i make a sale here you can see I have a Ice Blue Trax carry price. So I bought it for $3.25. That's with shipping. All my expenses, I put that total. Um, and I sold it for $14.50. And I track all that stuff. Here's another carry price, uh, $7.90. I sold it for $14.50. I've only made a few sales in this. So what do we have here? A Black Ice Marc-Andre Fleury. This one sold within minutes of me listing it. $6.38. I got $15.50 for it. Anyways, that's how I track all this stuff. I make sure that I'm on top of this, that these are always updated. Um, this is essentially everything on my eBay and you know, really important to, to keep track, to make sure that you're buying stuff that, that, or that I'm buying stuff that other people are buying, right? I wanna buy whatever, whatever you guys wanna buy, whatever's selling goods. So this is a good way too, where I can go back into these sheets and see what's sold and, and what hasn't. So it's really great for that. Then we get into my PSA submissions. So this is the first submission. We won't look at this one so much because I don't have this one back. This one's sitting at PSA, but all the sheets are relatively similar. So this is one that I have back and that I've made some sales on. So you can see I put in, in the notes now, I put all my grades. I removed the data for the cards that are my PC card, so I'm not counting those as expenses. Um, I did show this on the channel, so if you want to go back, check that video. I do the reveal for this submission, and I have sold some cards. And you know, these are the things that you definitely want to look at before doing a PSA submission. So you want to get your cost card cost in there, okay? You want to know how much the grading and the shipping is going to cost. You want to know what the PSA 10 value is. And then you want to know what your break even is. And what happens if you get a PSA 9? Is is that going to net you a return or are you going to lose money on a 9? If you're losing money on a 9, you want to be really careful in submitting that card. And then, you know, you want to know what you're going to make off of a PSA 10. So even the data that I have in here for a PSA 10 value, you can see here it shows a Lafreniere Young Guns canvas. Uh, PSA 10 value at $750. Since I sent this submission in, those that values come down dramatically. I did sell a couple of, or no, I sold one of them for, oh, well, it's in here, 413. I think it was like 460 bucks on, on eBay or something, and, and this is like less the fees. But you wanna definitely make sure that, that you have this data before you're sending the cards in. And this is gonna lead into the MNT and SGC stuff. You definitely want a spreadsheet like this. You want to know what the dollar totals are of the other cards because you just, I, I try and mitigate my risk as much as possible by knowing that I have a maximum return on the PSA 10. So that's why specifically I bought these Lafreniere canvases and why I bought the Makar canvases and the Suzuki canvases especially. These canvases, PSA 10 at one time, were up at somewhere around $900. Um, so was, well, Lafreniere at 750 I already talked about him. But this is a really good spreadsheet, and I, I think it's important to have. You don't want to grab cards out of your box and just send them into 
to these places, SGC or MNT, because I think the margins are just really thin. I think there's lots of ways to make money in this game. You look at, again, back to my, my Com C subs, like if you're looking to make, uh, you know, $30 on a card, well, I just made $11 on a, on a $3.25 card here. So are, are you, where are you better off putting your capital? Do you, do you need to send it in to MNT and go through that whole process? You have to buy the young guns, you have to vet them, you have to look through them. You send them in to make $30. I mean, I listed this card and literally 24 hours later, I made $11 on a, you know, a $3.25 capital investment. So you really wanna think about what you're doing when it comes to those things. So that's the PSA. This is the submission that I did the, my last video on, I believe, and I, they're at PSA. They, I should know the grades of these by tomorrow. So what I did was I did send in the Bergeron, the Barkov exclusives, the Datsuk Young Gun, and the Nathan McKinnon Young Gun. And you, you can see I broke it all down here. So my PSA 9s, if all of these cards come back PSA 9, I have, I will have roughly $3,268 worth of cards, which would provide me a 37% return. If all four of them get PSA 10s, you know, that'll be roughly $8,125 and um, a 241% rate of return. What I don't have accounted for in here and is important, especially with those SGC and MNTs, which is a sheet I'll get into, but you want to calculate out those eBay fees. eBay fees are about, you know, 13%, uh, a little bit less if you're a top rated seller, which I got recently and I'm pretty excited about it. It was a couple months ago, but I don't think I mentioned that. Sort of a big deal, right? Um, but you definitely want to count for those eBay fees because they'll they'll eat that return, okay? I'm not going to look at that one. This was my, my Ovechkin and McDavid sub. So... I was into this card. I bought these at a really good price and I could have even just flipped them raw and, you know, made about $900. I, I was in a really fortunate situation when I did this sub, but I knew with, if I got both of them as a PSA nine, I was going to do pretty well with it. Again, this is just arbitrage. I knew they were likely both nines. So I ended up submitting them and I ended up selling them for a total combined total of uh, $6,750. So you can see down here uh, a net return for $5,152.01. The total that I'd spent on all these with the grading and shipping, $1,597.99, giving me an ROI of $422. You want to have a sheet like this. Again, guys, I can't stress it enough. If you're just grabbing cards and sending them in, I think you're going to have a really tough time. Um, and this is the data for MNT and uh the sgc that i'm putting together and there's only one point this is just sort of a preview this will be a video that i'm doing very soon i just want to get my data together and get it tight and present it in a good way but it's it's like psa you want to look for these opportunities so if you see on the right hand side here you know i just noted a couple of these so um hellebuck is 16 dollars and MNT 9.5 is 85, Krebs is $14, MNT is $80, Norris is a $16 card, and SGC 10 went for about 120 Canadian Capris of $90, up at about 350 SGC 10, um, and McMichael $16 card went for $140 SGC 10. So you don't wanna just grade anything, that's all I'm gonna give away um, leading up to the next video. I'm gonna do some theoretical submissions do all that and you can see that I'm breaking all this stuff down to see what the costs are of the submissions what the cards cost what happens if they get a 9.5 what happens if they get a 10 and all that good stuff but you know those are some of the spreadsheets I use I think it's important to put in this work guys it's going to help you make more money and it's going to save you money ultimately it does take time but you know that's what you got to do you got to put in the time put in a bit of work and it'll work out thanks for watching check me out instagram lapp3030 underscore flips again september 17th is going to be the draw for uh the young guns giveaway and we will and we'll see you